This special meeting of the Jackson Board of Trustees hereby called to order at 6 30 p.m. A public hearing of the Board of Trustees of Jackson ISD will be held on 23 June 2016. And the meeting is now called to order. We will uh, call roll call, establish a quorum. Uh, Mr. Salinas? Dr. Salinas? Mr. Mr. Lafora? Mr. Lafora? I'm Steve Shadow, Board President, Dr. Lafora. Present. We have no uh, seats to be heard for this one. Go right ahead, Dr. Lafora. Members of the board, this is a process that we have to do every year, approximately once a year. Basically, we give a quick presentation of the budget and share the tax rate for the district. And as you know, we have several meetings going over the budget itself and the preparation of the different departments. So at this time, uh, Mr. Alessandro, I'll turn it over to you. Um, as Dr. McClure mentioned, this is one of the uh, public hearings that's, uh, that are required as part of the uh, budget preparation and adoption process. Um, as he also mentioned, you know, we have had uh, numerous meetings throughout the uh, past several, several months to discuss the budget for the 2016-17 school year. And tonight's meeting, I don't go into a lot of detail like we do with those meetings. Uh, I'm just going to give you the bird's eye view uh, for the public so that they can see what we're proposing and uh, to see if they have any comment on what we're proposing. So I'm going to start a little bit just by covering some of the basics. We are, again, uh, presenting this meeting because there are some legal requirements we have to adhere to. Uh, one of the things is that we have to have make sure that the budget was prepared by uh, June 19th, which it was. And for districts that began their fiscal year on July the 1st, the budget has to be adopted by the Board of Trustees by June the 30th. Um, so tonight I'll see you before June 30th, so we will be compliant to that requirement. When we're preparing the budget, there are several objectives that we keep in mind. We're always looking at what the board goals. We start with it, start there when we start developing the budget uh, to ensure that our budget is targeting those goals. We also want to make sure that we're demonstrating fiscal responsibility as we're developing that budget, that we're developing a budget that is balanced. That's our objective. Now, that always is not the case, and as you all know, that's not the case this year for the general operating fund, but it, that's always one of our objectives that we try to reach. And we, the board is required to adopt budgets for three of the funds uh, as required by law, which those are the general operating fund, the general nutrition fund, and the interest saving fund. How are uh, districts funded? Uh, basically, the majority of our funding comes from uh, state allocations. As you all know, we receive a lot of funds from the state uh, based on average daily attendance. And for next year, we're projecting about 22,000 students in our ADA. And that's not enrollment, that's the students in the seats throughout the year. Um, the, another major revenue source for the school district are local taxes, our property, uh, our, our taxpayers in the district uh, pay quite a bit of our uh, revenue through property taxes, and you'll see in a minute we'll get into a little more detail about that. Uh, we also receive a little bit of federal money. Um, we receive money from, from the Challenge System Program, most people will talk about that in a minute, and there are other sources that we receive grants and what have you, but we'll cover a little bit of those in a minute. The General Operating Fund is our largest fund. Uh, this is where we pay for everything from for salaries, uh, like all the supplies from um, paper clips to anything else you can imagine that we purchase for school district. The revenues for this fund uh, from, the, in the, from the local revenues, again, these are mostly property taxes, we collect about $84.5 million, or that's our projection for next year. State, uh, we're contributing about $89.8 million. Federal, about $3.5 TRS on behalf, just to clarify again, in mind that TRS on behalf is really like the employer portion of Social Security, a fact that most employers pay. Districts don't have to do that. The state pays on our behalf, and we have to do an entry on the revenue side and an offsetting entry for the same amount on the expense side. So you'll see that appear a little in the few, in few, uh, future slides. So total revenue for the general operating fund that we're projecting for the next school year is $186.4 million approximately. If you like to see some graph form, approximately 48% of our revenue is going to come from the state, and 45% from local. We have a couple of their federal and, and TRS on behalf. But those are the two major areas where our funding is coming from. The general operating fund expenditures, our personnel budget uh, for next year is going to be approximately $155 million or $154.9 million. Operating expenses are uh, budgeted at about $27 million. 
that tier is on behalf of the minimum ability to offset any side of the road and the expense is about 8.5 million. So our total expenditures is about 190.4 or 190.5 million dollars. Um, if you want to see it in graph form, uh, personnel costs are going to be about 81 percent. This typically for our district has been more in the 79 to 80 percent range, but because we are opening a new high school and it's taking quite a bit of resources to do that, that number did jump up and reached 81 percent. And our operations are at uh, 14 percent. Again, that's just something that's about 5 percent. The fund balance picture is the kind of what we're thinking it's going to look like. Um, for at the end of this school year, we're budgeting about a $38 million fund balance. Now, in reality, when we look at typically what happens at the end of the year, we'll close the books in November after all the adjustments have been done. We end up picking up a little bit more money than that. So that $38 million is maybe closer to $40 million when we're done. The revenue, again, just in, in summary from what we looked at a minute ago, is about $886.4 million and expenses about $190.4 so our estimated fund balance at the end of next school year is projected at about $34 million. Again, it'll be maybe a little bit over that when we're done, but not by much. Then I'm going to jump to the next fund, the Child Assistance Fund. There, I'm not going to go into all the detail, but the major, uh, the major funds come from here are federal dollars for the free and reduced lunch program and breakfast programs, about $10.4 million there, and then local revenue from the sales of uh, the, the uh, Food that we sell to the students and teachers in the U.S. versus in the, uh, the cafeterias. So total revenue is about $12.8 million in draft form. And you can see the majority of our money for the child nutrition fund comes from the federal government, about 81%. On the expense side, personnel costs are about $5 million, and then operations are about 7.7. We're looking at a total expenditure for that fund of about $12.9 million. In graph form, here is the opposite of what we saw in the general operating fund here. Our personal costs are 40%, and operations are 60%. We're over there, the personal costs were 81% that we saw a few minutes ago. The fund balance for child system, uh, we're projecting at the end of this year, it's going to be about $2 million. After you look at the revenue and expenses for next year, we're looking at a fund balance of about $1.8 million. As you all know, we have uh, been working with that fund to get it in compliance because we've had built up a little bit too much fund balance as required as allowed by the government. Uh, the federal, the feds want us to have no more than three months worth of operating expense. That $1.8 million will be set, will be there already. On the instant sinking fund, this is the fund where we pay for our principal and interest payments, if you will, and mortgage payments for the bonds that we sell to build our facilities. Uh, total local revenue, again, these are taxpayers paying taxes to the, to the school district specifically for this purpose, is about $33.6 or almost $33.7 million. We get a little bit from the state, about a million dollars. So total revenue is about $34.7 million. Again, you'll see that the majority of that money comes from local taxpayers, 97% of it. On the expense side, you'll see that our debt service is $34.5 million, and it's all for just paying principal and interest. That's the that those funds could be used for. And so 100% of it is used for that purpose. If you look at our fund balance, kind of what we're thinking we're going to be, um, at the end of this year, we are about $17.8 million. And there's a little note at the bottom of the slide that kind of just shows you that that is a high fund balance. However, there's a payment that we make in August that comes out of that fund balance. So then that $17.4 is going to be reduced by $9.2 million. For revenues, you'll see the revenues and expenses are about the same, and that's the goal always of that fund is to make sure that we only collect sufficient revenue to pay the debt service payments. So our fund balance at the end of next school year is projected at about $17.9 or $18 million. Again, out of that number, about $9 million is going to be for interest and bond payments uh, in August of 2017. So if you combine all these together, just to kind of give you an idea as to what the whole budget looks like, if you look at total all revenue at the bottom there, it's about $233.8 million. That's the total budget that we're adopting for the next school year on the revenue side. And again, just to kind of look at it in the big picture here, um, local is about 51%, state's about 39% when you look at the big picture. On the expense side, if you look at the total amount of expenditures for all the things we discussed a moment ago and add them all together, it's about $237.9 million. That's the budget, the expense budget for the next year for the school of price commission. Again, the majority of the costs are going to be personnel. When you look at it in cumulative like this, it's about 67% of our total budget. And uh, the next largest category is operations at 15%, and then debt service being those interest in payments at 14%. So if you look at the whole picture, we're projecting revenue at 233.8, 
expenditures at 237.9, and then you kind of see at the bottom there with the three bullets. For the general operating fund, that means that we're going to be exceeding our, re- our expenditures are exceeding our revenue by about $4 million. Again, the reason that's happening is we discussed through the various budget meetings that we've had is uh, the pro- primary reason is the opening of Veterans Memorial High School, the uh, personnel to, um, to staff that school. Challenge fishing, we're seeing a small decrease of about $149,000, uh, and IMS, we're actually seeing an increase of about, uh, about $150,000. If you want to look at kind of where we're at percentage wise, the general operating fund at the next four year, if these numbers come to fruition, we're looking at about 18% of expenditures remaining in fund balance. Our board policy says that we cannot go below 17%, so we're still right there. And as I said a little bit earlier, that 34 million, we may be able to adjust that a little bit up as we kind of look throughout the year and try to make sure that we minimize any expenditures that we can definitely uh, defer or not have to spend during next year. Child nutrition, uh, we're going to be at about 1.9 million, which is about 15% of expenditures. And interest in thinking, uh, we're going to be at about 18 million, which is about 52% of expenditures. But once we adjust that for the payment that's due in August, we'll be at 9.2 or 26% of expenditures. Um, our tax rate that we're proposing or will be proposing in September for adoption by the board, um, on the MO side, we're going to say that we're going to save a dollar four, which is what we have been for the past number of years. So we're not asking for a change there. On the debt service, there's a little history there for you as to what our tax rates have been. And for 2016, as it's projected right now, we're looking at about a 43 cent tax rate. So it's about five cents more than what we're paying right now. And that is because of the new bonds that were voted by the voters in May, and which will hopefully be selling in, in the August time frame. So we will see a little bit increase there. We're hoping that those sales that we're going to do in, in, in conjunction with some bond refundings, that maybe we won't have to go all the way to 43 cents, but that's the safety margin that we're using right now. Hopefully, we'll be able to keep it a little closer to 41 cents, or maybe even 42 cents, but we'll have to just wait and see how that works out. So, our total tax rate for next year is going to be $1.47 per hundred dollars in tax return. And how does that affect our taxpayers? Well, here's a couple of examples. So, the first column if somebody has a home that's assessed at $90,000, and that, and that's, that's their homestead, and we subtract the $25,000 homestead exemption. And if y'all will recall, that was increased at least to be $15,000. And last year in November, the voters voted to go ahead and uh, accept the state's uh, increase of $10,000, so now it's $25,000. So that $90,000 home, after that homestead exemption, um, becomes a $65,000 taxable value home. So our taxes for next year would be at 955.5 of those tax rates that were adopted that we discussed a minute ago. The year prior to that, tax rate was nine hundred nine hundred and twenty-three dollars is what they were paying in annual taxes. So the difference is about thirty-two dollars and fifty cents per year. That's what the increase was um, after the this new tax rate increase that we're discussing. That mi- the middle column where it says one hundred and forty-four thousand one sixty-seven. The reason we use that number is because that's the median or the average home value in Judson Independent School District. So a taxpayer that owns that house that's in the right in the middle. Uh, the increase in taxes from one year to the next is about $60 or 59.58 cents. And the very last column shows the home that's about a $200,000 value after the homestead exemption at 175 and the increase there from one year to the next is about $87.50 annually uh, because of the, the bonds that we've got here. And that's what I have. If anybody has any questions, I'll be trying to have an answer. Any questions? Okay, this meeting is adjourned at 445. We'll give you a few minutes to review the tape and we'll do the next meeting.